into an upright position. We'll continue to hold the up button on our HMI until it's complete. We also have control to do this through our remote pendant. Uh, this is especially useful for folding it down. It allows us to kind of monitor our rotate position to make sure we're in our cradle, as well as doing a little bit of fine tuning on that rotate as we fold down. Once we have the manipulator folded up, we're going to go ahead and put our pedestal mounting bolts in. There's a series of inch and a quarter bolts that we use to bolt the base solid. This allows us to reach that 6,100 pound capacity. And all of those bolts should be torqued to 300 foot-pounds prior to any further movement and or lifting with the arm. And as you can see, we have good control of our arm here. It uh, moves real nice on sealed roller bearings. Uh, so as we add weight, we'll retain that free movement of the arm. The first thing we're going to do here this evening is show a load test. Uh, we'll take it up to full capacity arm here. Uh, in front of me, we have uh, some counterweights that weigh 6,050 pounds. So we'll lower this, bring our adapter over, and bolt that in place. As you can see, we're lowering it right now. I'm holding the activate button, pressing the down button on the pendant. That gives us nice, fine control. For the first five seconds, we're going to move at a creeping speed. Still, the main joint is powered. Uh, this gives us a little bit of extra reach by doing this, as well as a little bit of ease of operation for the operator. As we bring it into place here, like one like that we're moving around. So there is a lot of inertia. But at the same time, we're able to move the arm with relative ease. We can release all of our brakes individually so that we have a little bit finer control of where we're moving these larger loads. Or we do have the option to release multiple brakes at one time. Uh, this gives us a little bit finer control. With the full weight of the arm, we're able to get real fine control lifting. Uh, we maintain our creep speed. So when we first start our travel, we're able to go up at about an eighth of an inch per second before going to the full half an inch per second. Uh, we maintain this while going up and down. So we're able to get quite fine control out of this. Another feature we have is out at the end is our end effector has up to five degrees of tilt plus and or minus. Uh, this allows us to kind of keep control as well as accommodate for any sag in the arm while we're moving. We'll go ahead, 
unpin our bridge system to allow travel there. As you can see, I'm holding the remote, our activate and our bridge travel button. We're able to move that back and forth. Bridge system travels slightly faster. We're getting about three quarters of an inch per second. And we also have our rotate functions. We can rotate counterclockwise and counterclockwise. We're going to go ahead and move this counterweight a little bit out of the way here and continue on with the rest of our testing.
As you can see, we have full control. So if we lift, and actually move our table out of here now. We still have control of individual brakes, so we can release one individually uh, to get finer movement. Or we can go ahead and release all of them. So that allows us to get linear travel as the arm flexes out of the way. Uh, it allows us to get further travel to the extension of the arm. With our end vector, we have free motion to rotate our actuator here. We already demonstrated the tilt. 